the crew of Apollo 13, wishing everybody there a nice evening. And, uh... The crew has just wrapped up a live TV broadcast showing those on Earth how comfortably they can live and work in zero gravity. And, uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. Mission Control asks Apollo 13 for their last checklist item that evening. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. The cryo tanks are the oxygen tanks. The power fans were turned on within the tank for the third cryo stir of the mission. A procedure to stir the oxygen slush inside the tank to avoid settling. What happens next is unimaginable. The crew hears a loud bang. One of the two oxygen tanks has just exploded. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. The spacecraft has suffered a catastrophic emergency. Unbeknownst to the crew, the service module now has a gaping hole in its side. Yet, by some miracle, the crew is alive. This is Houston, say again, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, Houston, we've had a problem. The explosion sets off a domino of disasters for the crew. Warning lights indicate the loss of two of the three fuel cells, the spacecraft's primary source of electricity and life support. Water supply is cut off. Oxygen tank one is empty. Uh, our O2 uh, quantity number two tank is ringing through. Did you get that? The second oxygen tank is rapidly depleting. What happened on the service module was a double failure. A manifold blew out that took out both fuel cell power systems. There was no power on the vehicle, except for the batteries in the command module. The quick-thinking crew tries to close the hatch between the command and lunar modules to protect their oxygen supply. Continuing to troubleshoot with the Apollo 13 crew, uh, closely watching oxygen quantities and pressures in the command module. But the hatch lid won't stay shut so they secure it with a strap. 13 minutes after the explosion, Lovell just happens to look out the left-hand window and sees something venting. He reports to Mission Control. We are, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. Roger, we copy your venting. Lovell's lucky glance warns the crew of another potential catastrophe. The venting is precious oxygen, rapidly escaping the second and only remaining oxygen tank. Without oxygen, the crew is doomed. Not only does it supply the breathing air, but the fuel cells need oxygen and hydrogen to provide water and power to the spacecraft. And now the fuel cells were dying. The command module batteries had to be saved for re-entry, which was days away. Time is of the essence. Astronauts, flight controllers, and engineers across America get to work. They must invent a plan to bring the crew home alive. One challenge is to find a trajectory to bring the crippled spacecraft home safely. The crew must change course because they are heading straight for the moon. As oxygen levels near zero, NASA begins planning for an alternate mission. They propose a radical idea. It's uh, slowly going to zero and uh, we're uh, starting to think about the uh, lamb lifeboat. The crew agrees. Yeah, that's what we're thinking about too. They will use the lunar module to keep the crew alive and to get them onto a return to earth trajectory. We now show an altitude of 180,521 nautical miles. Here in Mission Control, we are looking uh, now looking towards an alternate mission, swinging around the moon and using the uh, lunar module power systems because of the situation that has developed here this evening. This free return trajectory uses the moon's gravitational force to propel them back home. 
Flight Director Glenn Lunny assures the world with caution. We think we have uh, uh, the situation in control. We've projected the uh, consumables as I've described, and uh, we have a plan for carrying out the rest of the mission, but uh, uh, there's going to be no relaxation at all as far as that goes from now until splash. Next, to preserve critical power for their return, they shut down the command module and will go to minimum power in the lunar module, or LEM. The Apollo 13 problem was a shortage of power. So everything had to be shut down, and the question was, can we turn off the gyroscopes? Can we turn off the heaters? We had to turn it back on again for the re-entry, and could we do that? And you thought it over very carefully about what was inside these inertial instruments. Would anything break? Would they come back on again? That's what you worried about. And finally, they have to figure out a navigation plan. Exactly how, when, and in what attitude would they burn the lunar module descent engine to provide a quick return home? The lunar excursion module, uh, the LEM, it was designed to land on the moon, but it wasn't designed to, to control everything coming back to Earth. Completely new procedures had to be written and tested in the simulator before being passed up to the crew. With only 15 minutes of power left in the command module, Capcom Jack Lausma instructs the crew to make their way into the LEM. Flight Econ. Go ahead, Econ. The pressure in O2 Tank 1 is all the way down to 297. You better think about getting in the LEM or using the LEM system. The LEM was designed to supply only enough oxygen and power to support two men for two days, but it was being asked to care for three men for four days. To conserve power, the crew shuts off all but the life-sustaining systems in the LEM. Water is another huge concern. They needed to cool systems and keep the crew hydrated. Uh, we're at this time uh, water critical in the LEM, so we'd like to use as little as possible. The crew cuts down their intake to six ounces each per day. They would be dangerously dehydrated throughout the return. Carbon dioxide is another major problem. Day two in the LEM, a warning light indicates dangerous levels of CO2 buildup. They have to figure out a way to soak up the carbon dioxide they are exhaling. There were square filters to remove CO2 from the spacecraft in the command module and round receptacles in the LEM. Engineers on the ground scramble to find a way to fit a square peg into a round hole. Their solution requires spacesuit parts, socks, a flight manual cover, and duct tape. The crew hacks a new system while combating the effects of poisonous gas building up inside. 